So how is your Lenten observance coming? You already broken your Lenten sacrifice? Uh, forgotten ate meat last Friday? Well, just begin again. Just say immediately, Nunc chepe, now I begin. Last weekend, I attended a retreat given by Father Tim Gallagher. During the retreat, he read the letters of Venerable Bruno Letourney, the founder of the uh, Oblates of Mary. In these letters, he was writing to his, the people he was giving spiritual direction to. And, and often in these letters, he would keep repeating again, just begin again. That When you stumble, when you fall, when you sin, just begin again. Here's what Father Gallagher has to say about beginning again. To one woman, he says to her, there's something heroic about this beginning again. He says, begin again, not only every day, but every hour of every day. And in his own writing says, if I should fall even a thousand times a day, a thousand times a day, I will, with peace in my heart, turn to God, ask his forgiveness, and begin again. So each day, each week of our Lenten journey, really, we should say immediately, Nunc chipe, now I begin. As we enter into this second week of Lent, the Church presents to us a message of faith and hope. Last week, we heard how Jesus was tempted by the devil. It's the Church prompted us to look at our temptations, look at how we are tempted by the devil. In this uh, journey of looking into our sins, looking at the obstacles that we have in facing Christ, can be an artist's journey. So today, the church gives us the story of the faith of Abraham and the hope of the glory of Christ in the transfiguration. Abraham had the faith to, to leave his homeland and journey to an, an unknown destination because God called him. God is calling us to to leave our comfort zones and to, and to journey with Him on a, on a spiritual journey that of unknown destination. This is not an easy journey. Jesus knew that the journey He was asking His disciples to take would not be easy. Their journey to Jerusalem where Jesus would face His passion and death. And so Jesus gave them a reason for hope. He gave them the transfiguration. The Transfiguration gives us a glimpse of the glory of Christ. It gives us hope for our journey, not just our Lenten journey, but for our faith journey. It gives us hope for our ultimate destination when we are, through the Paschal Mystery, in communion with the glorified Christ. Dr. Andre Andropoulos, an Orthodox Christian, comments on the significance of the Transfiguration in his book, this is my beloved Son, the Transfiguration of Christ. Dr. Andropoulos says, In the Transfiguration story, Christ lifted the curtain of His humanity and revealed His divinity. The revelation of the divinity of Christ reminds us that the Gospel is not the story of a man, but the story of God who became human while never ceasing to be God. Christ did not do anything out of necessity or need, but by choice. The realization becomes more important when we consider the significance of the passion of Christ. Christ prepared His disciples to understand it by His transfiguration. In this way, even at the moment of suffering and death, the Christ of the crucifixion was not a powerless and defeated human, but the same glorious Christ that Peter, John, and James had already seen at the Transfiguration. The Transfiguration reminds us that Christ, the Logos of God before the ages, united with human nature by His own choice. The glorious Word of God was humbled, but not humiliated by becoming human. Therefore, the transfiguration of Christ is the model for the transfiguration of the individual members into His body. This means that as members of the body of Christ, we live His life. We are crucified with Christ when we celebrate 
and internalize His crucifixion. We are resurrected with Him when we celebrate His resurrection, and we are transfigured with Him when we celebrate His transfiguration. We become Christ when we receive His sacramental, resurrected body and blood, and this is our personal transfiguration into Him. Each time we come to Mass, we enter into the transfiguration of Christ through the Paschal mystery that we celebrate here at Mass. St. Therese of Lisieux reflected on the transfiguration. This is what Father Gary Castor has to say about St. Therese's reflections. St. Therese understood how the transfiguration of Jesus shines light upon the true essence of our humanity. She allowed the truth of that moment to encompass her life and live with a hope secured by complete trust in the Paschal mystery. Her life became the type of lived communion the disciples witnessed on the mountain. This communion prompted her to make love incarnate in the most ordinary moments of her life. She heard the voice from the clouds and surrendered her life to the truth to which it testified. So our goal this Lenten season is to make this love incarnate, to just love in little ways so that we can live in this communion with Christ. This Lent, do something, just live in little ways.